Hi guys, welcome. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. When we are, it's Tuesday when we're recording this. I got Pastor Brad here. We're back. We're Woo! back. That might have been really loud. He's gonna have to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. I haven't been at the table with you in a few weeks. I know. It's it was, since we've started this whole like local church or yeah. you know, building the we house and then influencing the city thing, we don't sit at the table together very often. We need to make a point to come back together like every four weeks. Yeah, this is fun. All right. Well, um, we're <laughs> we're just chatting. Remembering it's been four years since yeah. we started streaming with Matt, you were saying? The yeah, Matt, Matt Broden. Broden, who helps us with the podcast and is really the pioneer behind all the streaming in our church. Yeah. And so he, uh, his wife actually met his wife at 24 Hour Fitness. She was there working and uh, I went to go get a membership and we got into a really cool conversation <laughs> about his daughter, Aria. And she had a really Aww. cool biblical name. Little baby. And I invited them to church and they were like, sure. And Matt showed up and they were both like, hey, this is for us. We want to be here. We're hungry for this. And then right before. Like, Hop in. Take some to get help us with streaming right away. Yeah. Well, and he had. Um, yeah, it was like week one. Yeah. Yeah. Week <laughs> one. Yeah. And then he had he had uh, done some work with, you know, just wildlife photography and video work and all it's gonna have to come on like, one of these weeks yeah we talk. gotta we gotta bring yeah. that on at some point talk about all maybe you need to bring him on because that's like a yeah. influencing thing yeah i know we'll talk about that but that matt list. matt broughton has brought us here when COVID happened to finish that yeah he's like all right you're ready to go streaming and i said ready or not here we go mm-hmm. <laughs> and now we're here so it's been four years that we've been wow. pioneering this pretty crazy and when did the podcast start the podcast started about a year into COVID, I think. We had gotten in the upper room. We had done recording services, a few up there. That yeah. was so much fun. I wonder if that's online. That was fun. That was crazy. We need to go back and oh just go gosh. through the history of it we all. We do. We'll we should have a viewing the, night. I know. I know. <laughs> like fast forward. Um, but it's important yeah. to remember that stuff. Yeah. So like, don't dismiss that for anyone listening. Like, yeah. Remembering... Remember when Jesus, he, he told the disciples, they were having a conversation about what they didn't have. And Jesus said, have you already forgotten what I've done for you? Have oh. you forgotten about the loaves? Have you forgotten about the fish? Don't forget the loaves. Have you forgot about the miracles? Jesus was wanting to take them to another place spiritually. He was having a conversation with them about leaven and the leaven of Herod and the leaven or, yeah. or the leaven of the Sadducees yeah. Yeah, the religious and, and the, the religious and the political. And uh, he was wanting to take them deeper, but they were still stuck on the fact that they had no bread. He said, don't you remember? Fill your mind with the stories. That's a word like, for me. That's good. Yeah, Fill your mind with the stories. I had a whole sermon that I ditched the last two weeks. I've tried to like force this Put it sermon. Put right in. now. Uh, this is gone. Oh, he's like, I want to save it. Well, I don't know. It's just not. <laughs> That's I, so good. But, but they, um, the Bible talks a lot about meditating uh, on who God is, mm-hmm. what God has said, and what God has done. And so you have to fill your mind with who he is what he said and what he's done in order for you to live a powerful Christian life. Do you think it was, do you think it was like weird? Remember, do you know how they were always like build stones? Do you, stones of remembrance in the old Testament? Did he, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to remember if like that was something that the first, if Abraham did that out of like, Oh my gosh, I just need to build you something to remember. I need to build something to remember. Or did, did God say, build me? He has t- told people in the past, build, put here the stones and remember this place. But I'm like, the first time it ever happened, I just imagine like going along and then like, I need to build a stone little thing right now. Well, I think it's in, you know? I think there's a couple things. Number Oops. one, I uh, I have not looked Sorry, up the, the, the actual origin of when did we start building memorial altars yeah. and stones. But I will say that um, there's something to human nature where we have to right. mark it. Yes. You have to identify it. We get pictures. We put them on our fridge. We put, um, we post, we go on a vacation. We want it on social. Like we have to mark it so that we remember. Yeah. And there's something to that. I love that. that. Yeah. And like, I love that. I mean, but God, you even look, I mean, the story that's coming into my mind is Abraham and Mount Moriah. Mm -hmm. You know, like he chose that mountain as a place to remember what he had promised to Abraham and his descendants. God, God chose that. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. God chose that mountain. And that's literally the mountain where yeah. 
the temple sets in Isn't Jerusalem. Isn't that crazy? crazy. I've done some studying on that too because it's my, my name, Mariah, and I was like, let me do some digging here. And Mariah also, the, the first part, M-O-R in the Hebrew. Okay, if you're Jewish person, or a Hebrew scholar, please help me out. Don't judge me. I This is just my own digging and word searches. But um, like it's the M-O-R and the Yah are separate also. And the Yah is like to Yahweh, the, the fragrance to Yahweh, Whoa. the myrrh to Yahweh. Cool. That's why I got myrrh on me. I got well, a little myrrh okay, branch, y'all. Everyone's like, why do you have spikes on your arm? If, if you see online, I'm... Anyways, I love it. Yeah. Uh, but the myrrh to Yahweh because he was like the suffering love. That's the, the hill, yeah. the hill of suffering love. Is that the, that's the hill that he went up. So the the name Moriah in the time with Abraham bringing his son is like so significant as a foreshadow to Jesus going up the hill of suffering love. So good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> There's so many little nuggets like that. Anyways, so yeah. I love that. Side, that side needs side. to be clipped and put out there. Oh, right oh. There. <laughs> that, that was a good word. Right there. <laughs> that's a good word. He made it. Yeah, that's a good yeah. word. You, you know, it's interesting too, just like tying back to like where I think we might go with the topic, but four years and we're mm. still grinding mm. and we're still building. It's a slow process. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know the reality of quick miraculous growth really hmm. like in my life and hmm. my ministry wow. most of my ministry has been built through private um devotion unseen serving showing up day after day week after week year after year yeah responding to calls and texts and like it's it's just brick by brick yeah. by brick by brick okay. i don't know like there's some that they open the church doors and Man, the people flood in. Like we have a lot of people flooding into our <clears throat> church right now. But that you, some people say, "Oh, they came. They're an overnight success." We're not an overnight success. Mm. This has been ten year, almost <clears throat> ten years now, of just showing up. Yeah, a lot behind praying, that. Yeah, serving. It's such a slow process when you're walking with what God. What do you do when you feel rushed by the quick? Because yes, it's like a slow. But what do you do? Because I there was like last year, I feel like it's felt like so much is happening, like an acceleration. But what do you do when I kind of I know this, but I'm just want to talk about it. Like yeah. it feels the the momentum of just what's happening feels like it could rush you, could rush us and deciding like, wait a second, we don't have to go with that. We can go in our own pace and we can pull back and go slow and. And like hop in when he there is momentum because you like want to catch that, but you know what I mean. Like, how do you pull back and not be rushed by momentum of just like everything's happening? And we actually have some control. Um, just you know what we're gonna control. That's a funny word because it's like actually I'm gonna let go and go slower so and like good. you know and like you were talking about the tearing on Sunday. Um, if you didn't listen, go back and listen on Sunday. Um, but like the rushing of people's voices saying we should be doing it like this or this timing like did people around david saying now is the time go 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 and the feeling like rushing even or like it's just not the right timing but pulling back and saying no not yet you know yeah right intention <clears throat> maybe even the right word wrong season yeah ooh that's so hard for me i know i know uh, i i have really true. really made a lot of mistakes here yeah. Wow. Most That's of the time, so good. I've made a ton of mistakes here. Most of the time Say when it. God mm. starts to talk to me about something or I, I, I get stirred up about an idea or a passion project or yeah. something, normally I think it's for now and mm. it's usually for the future. <laughs> You're a very I'll, future oriented person. Yeah, so I'll start going after it and then we'll do it and it'll be horrible. Mm. And then I'll go, what happened, God? And he's like, I, actually, I don't even hear anything sometimes. Would it help? It'll just, it, it just won't work. <clears throat> Does it I'll help, though, to have people around you in that, not in the dreaming part, but in the, like, when you're trying to make it happen, that's not negative, but saying, like, because this is who I am, <laughs> is to say, like, it doesn't feel like right now or like does that, is that something people want to hear or, like, would you receive that or is that, like, you just got to figure it out? I think... 
for, for the, people who are visionaries. That is a great Because I don't know question, where, like, like, you know. Yeah, where the tension is. So yeah. I think it's very, Sorry, for any, no, because this is, no, this is good. This is going to open up the whole thing. Um, I think it's very difficult. One of the biggest challenges any leader will face is who you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. The people you surround, you're only as strong as the people that you do life and ministry with. That's good. Like, and, and their counsel and their feedback and what they hear and what they're going after alongside you. This is, you just need people that really know you. You need people that really know mm. what you're doing. Wow. People that really understand the pace Dang. that you're running in. People that, yeah, and the other thing, and this is not to put shame or condemnation on anybody. And I have a lot of people around me. I am surrounded by sinners sometimes. Like I have people in the world that are not all there, but most of the people in my core are very spiritually strong and healthy. Mm -hmm. And part of that, the advantage there is that they're not pushing me out of a place of dissatisfaction with their own life. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. some people, everyone, I don't even know, like, I think I heard it was Eric Johnson recently. He said mm. something. He said it, it was on a podcast, but he said, I don't know if it's possible for you to prophesy outside of your own perspective. He yeah. said, just a thought. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's even possible for you to speak about the future, speak about something outside of your without own your perspective, filter? without yeah. your own human perspective yeah. Yeah. on something. Right. So anytime mm. someone's counseling you understand that they come with their own. Yeah council yeah, yep. of advisors that are counseling them and they're their own. Yeah. So you bring someone who's extremely influenced by a political spirit into your circle, understand that you're going to get political, oh uh, advising every time they speak to you about these certain issues yeah. that affect that. Right. So like understanding who's sourcing the people who source you, mm. like it's critical. Wow. So like when I'm, when I'm making a decision or when you're trying to figure out like, where's this rub number one, it's you cannot replace a personal relationship with Jesus. Hmm. He's the counselor. So whether or not, yeah, Holy Spirit's Whoa. the counselor. So whether or not you're in charge, under charge, whether you serve, whether you're a volunteer, whether you're paid, wherever you're at in your, in your sphere, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you will be moved by forces that are not him. That's so good. Even your closest people can be voices yep. that you, you look yeah. at David. Yeah. Right. His closest guys in the cave were telling him, this is the moment where God has delivered your enemy to your hand. Grab it. Grab David it. had to say no. Yeah. But the people around David, but David, they knew he was called by God. And so the people around him, they, the men around him, they said, okay. And then David's demonstration of his faith proved and was evidence that he was actually hearing God. That's so hard. People are like, oh, foolish. You don't, you should, come on, take yeah. it. Come on. And it's like, no, mm. you've got to be abiding. Yeah. So oh, like, that's so, so you, good though. Okay. You cannot replace people a around you. relationship with Jesus. Yeah. You have to also be very discerning. I feel that discernment is probably one of the, less least talked about gifts that we probably need to speak about more mm. is having discerning people around you yeah and not discerning like yeah, negativity yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. discerning like being able to discern the spirits and discern the moments that's good is this for now is this for later is this and and even if in the other part is like on discerning like let's say you discern that i'm making a bad decision like oh this is going to end tragically can you then also love me and support me and allow me to fail yeah, right. Because I feel like discernment gift is like not emotional. Like I don't feel like it's like it's when it's removed from their like the gift is not so emotional. It's like it's a gut thing. Like I I know this, and it's if whether or not whatever you decide, I know this. I, I feel like I there's feel something like it's on, on this emotional right now too. is like. Well, yeah, I just feel like that's tied. That was never the point. Emotions is a feeling thing. And understand, even with discernment. If you're not healthy, if you're not a healthy discerner, mm -hmm. the world will be framed by suspicion. Yes. The world will be framed by seeing through things because you're going to have a superpower that allows you to see motivations. Mm. You're going to see uh, the intentions. You're going to see all this. So you have to actually be devoted to Jesus. Number one, there's no replacement for being devoted to yeah. Jesus. But the people around Again, you have to be yeah. discerning. And at what point, just on that, like, is, are you just suspicious? Like, what about the kingdom? 
you know, talking, you said, you mentioned the political people around you and like the religious and like suspicion might probably fits into one of those. But like what, yeah, what if you're like, you're just prophesying and like looking at suspicion. That's like when a discernment gift goes sour. Yeah. Cause it's, it's like prophesying doom and gloom and suspicious of things. But what about the kingdom, the kingdom, like, and, yeah. and, and to cover. Yeah. Anyways, that's, but, but different. what's crazy is so like, just I would have, I don't even know if I could explain in this one episode how many times I would have saved myself pain if I would have listened to someone with discernment. Wow. <laughs> See? Mm. Someone, if I would have took counsel from someone with discernment. Yeah. Wisdom. In certain moments, not di wisdom's different. Okay. Discernment is knowing what something is. Wisdom's knowing what to do with it. Ooh. So I have wisdom. I have a gift of wisdom. Uh, Anna have a gift of discernment, but there's some who have a primary gift yes. of discernment. Like Shanna has a primary yeah. gift of discernment. Just for an example, I'll keep it very ambiguous. But um, I was asking Shanna to meet somebody. And Shanna just very quickly, she's like, I don't know if that's somebody I want to be close to. Ooh. And I said, what? What are you talking about? I said, just, just meet this person. She's like, uh, I don't know. Then we found out, uh, you know, a week later, this person had said some crazy stuff about our church and on and on and on. And was like, kind of like, like was, it was a hornet's nest. Yeah. And, uh, it, it caused me a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Like this situation caused me a lot of pain. And, uh, I go back to her and I was telling her about it. She goes, I felt it. I felt yeah. it. there was something there. And, uh, mm -hmm. if I would have listened to her, I would have, cause I was like trying to push for this relationship. I was wow. talking about pushing. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying what, to push for this Just on that, sorry, I keep going down little rabbit trails, but what would make you or somebody like you to listen to that discernment? Or what would it take for someone? It's, it's you're like so you said, hard. because So many things would have saved me if I would have. Like, what would it have taken? Th this is so hard. This or wh what does it take for anyone to listen to someone with a discerning gift? And then we can hop back to what we were talking no, about. No, because I, just wanted to I feel like we're supposed to talk about this yeah. right now. We don't talk about yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, like, it's good. So like for we'll me, it's holy ground, number one. It's holy ground for me in decision making. Hmm. And so I don't, what if I like want to, slowing down. What, no, holy ground means that uh, it's God's territory. And in God's territory, like you can actually choose to be hurt. Hmm. So like, so like it's, hmm. It's hard. I can't put separation between my people, even if I know it's going to hurt me. Hmm. So I could have a discernment thing on somebody, but I will still engage that relationship many times because I love them. Yeah. And because there's hope there, hmm. even though I know it's going to end bad. Yeah. Even though you, I, that's you. I mean, I'm saying me. Cause that's not me. me. I'm no, out. <laughs> even though I know it's going to end bad because yeah. I have Jesus as my model. Hmm. Jesus discerned you. Let Judas. him have like let him worry about it. No, be willing to be hurt. Mm. But then you can't complain about it because right. you knew it was going to be bad. Huh. Okay. You knew uh -huh. it was going to be bad. You gave yourself to it. You exposed yourself. You were vulnerable. You gave yourself to this friend or this person. Like you you sought their approval or whatever. Like you went after that relationship. And sure enough, it was bad. Mm. It ended bad. Mm. Um they used, uh, my old pastor used to give me this parable. And he would say, um, he said, you know, there was uh, the story of the scorpion and the frog. He said, the scorpion went to the frog and he said, can you take me across the creek? <laughs> Have you heard this? No. One? Scorpion went to the frog and said, can you take me across the creek? Uh, frog says, no way. You're going to sting me. He goes, no, I won't. I promise. He's like, I, I don't believe you. You're going to sting me. He goes, he goes, I won't. I've changed. <laughs> Dang, so, the frog, that. so the frog says, all right, get on my back. And so he swims across the creek with the scorpion on his back. Just before he jumps off, scorpion stings him. He jumps off. He says, hey, I thought you weren't going to sting me. He goes, I'm a scorpion. It's what I do. <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> you it's know, messed up. Yeah. I, my, there's so many real examples of that. Do, do you right? know what I'm yes. saying? Like, this is what I'm saying. So, like, you have to, but, like, would you do anything different? Would I would do like like different? so like yeah, if you really yeah. love but if you I get that I get that but yeah. like for me that's the holy but ground. you're not it depends if you're yeah. that's the holy ground do you understand what uh, I'm trying to say this is the holy ground for me because I actually believe it's Christian and very biblical 
to give yourself to people who will hurt you. Yeah. Hmm. That's the Jesus model. So like giving yourself to people who will hurt there's you. There's a big old hole I want to go down. Sa- saving a seat for the critic. Huh. There's there's a lot to say here. Saving a seat for the critic. Allowing the critic. Not an abusive person. Not an abusive person. Because when I hear that story of the scorpion, I'm thinking this. Uh, I think of like an abuser that's like, oh, I'm not going to do it. Again. I'm never going to do that. And then they do over and over do. and over. And yes. like, you know, that's so there's careful here. I'm, uh, no, I'm with you because it, like <clears throat> if you're in a domestic relationship, yeah. that's you're talking abusive. about a critical person. I'm talking about like Christian ministry. Cool. Even in Christian ministry, though. Christian ministry. But yeah, I, right. I know what you mean. What I'm I saying know. is okay. there, there is a... So, so to be clear, so yes. what we're talking about, you can... Because I agree with Because I'm like, run. I agree I, with Mariah. No and way. Shanna would say the same thing. My wife Shanna would say the same thing. Um, you run. I don't always run. Yeah. Because I, I really have... I, I'm a pastor. I feel deep. <laughs> I feel deep connection to people. Uh-huh. So even if they're going to hurt me, I've had people hurt me over and over and over again. And I will still open my doors to them and bring them back when, to the t- like. If the Lord has told me this person is your assignment, that sounds kind of bad to say, but like to to me privately, this person is for you to pray over. If they are going to hurt you, or or He doesn't tell me, but I know it. I know because I'm also discern something. Um, this is your assignment. Then I can go into it and I'm like, I'm good. I love you. And I don't care how much you hurt me. Kind of like a parent would with their children. How do you children. know God's speaking to you to about a person though? Usually when I can't stand them. <laughs> it's usually when it's like. Because now I'm going to take your role because I'm thinking. praying for them and I start because I'm because, you know, I've, I've I know that the the best thing that he for my life he's told me to do is to pray for my enemies. He told us all to bless your enemies yes. and not curse them. So it's usually starts when I'm, pr- I, I find myself praying for this person and the Lord's like, I keep praying for them. That's it. Just praying. And then something is growing within me for compassion for them. And it's like not always, but sometimes it's an, it becomes an assignment um, in their life. But then there's other times drop it like i am not getting involved i am not a savior the savior has has come he has risen he is alive i am not him and so i can let go and say like this is not i am not gonna save you yeah i am not holy spirit i am not the your your um you know your guide in that way i can do what i can do but there's comes a time you do need to let go because we're not saviors. And so, I, so that's so where it gets tricky. I'm, I'm flipping sides. So we're wow, going back and forth. You go. know, there's two sides. Yeah. So it's like, there's the side, I'm going to give myself to someone who will hurt me. Or I am going to release someone to be changed by God or be with God or let them go. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to actually expose myself to them. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm going to put distance but between it's like, me and them. What is he there's saying? Two sides. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I have, like, I do, like, counseling with people all the time obviously there many times someone will tell me god has told them to be with someone who's toxic like in relationships See, in that case in that case Ooh, i i take your side all no. over the place yeah. don't listen to my advice about the scorpion the that's frog, why i brought it up that's why like, i brought it up yeah, yeah so like if you're with someone who's just extremely toxic or abusive <clears throat> or or there's some some toxicity to their yeah. life and it's like this hasn't changed for years. Yeah. It's been abuse. It's been neglect. It's been whatever. You need to get away from that relationship. Yeah. Hear that. Yeah. You, you need to get away from that li- relationship. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about I really care when someone speaks into my life. Like I, I make I there's a lot of people who have access to my life. There's a lot of people who say yeah. a lot of crazy things in my life. You know, and and I really value. They may not even know it, but I really, really value people's opinion. Mm. Yeah. So these people may not realize, but they, I hold them in high regard, and then they say something that hurts me, and then this is a personal thing. Yeah. This is not everybody. Say something that hurts me, and then your nature is to like, okay, well, I'm gonna categorize that as this, and them as this. Mm. I'm gonna put them in this box. I'm gonna put some distance between me and them. I don't know that that's the Jesus route. No. You know, yeah. I think that, but also I probably would not have someone close to me that's extremely critical all the time. Someone who's like constantly like, right. 
that, that I just couldn't do life or yeah. ministry that way. It'd be too defeating all the time yeah, because right. I, I yeah. do actually absorb people's opinions. Hmm. Um, I, I, my, my, like, I think on my gravestone, is that what it's called? My grave yeah. when I'm dead, if I have one, <laughs> it'll say like, ask questions. Cause I, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm just like, can never say it enough that like, well in, in that, I guess in kind of in that case, but like when someone is, what do you, I guess critical, but just when you think that what someone you care about is saying something and it's, I'm trying to des- describe this well, but to ask what they mean can change everything. Cause it, it, then it's, it takes off, like takes out the fangs. It takes off the, like the filter, just like asking people what they mean. Yeah. Um, but I know like I'm thinking about David <laughs> and Saul and he could not do that. And there's, <coughs> A time we, where he could be around Saul, and then there was a time and he had to flee and get away. Yeah, yeah. So there was a time that he was like, "I can be around this still," and then there was a time when he said, "Like I, I still loved him, but I need to be away. I can't I have to I have to flee. Literally, I have to run away." Yep. He said, "If I stay here, I'm gonna surely die." Yeah. He's gonna get me at some point. Yeah. And he, Saul was intent on killing him. And what I talked about Sunday. Yeah. Because we're talking about the tearing away, and we're talking about the anointing and the process. Yeah today uh what i said sunday was <clears throat> i forgot where i was going with that <laughs> saul he had to run away from saul Saul, he did but there was a tearing yeah hmm. there was a tearing and so <coughs> david when he tore saul's robe he gave it back to him that's so, so said, BA. I, I, yeah, I know it's so <laughs> crazy because he, he said i could have taken this moment i could have forced this i could have taken it Mm. In my hand, by the sword, I could have taken your life, actually. That's crazy. This door was wide open, and it's actually a wide open door to the actual word that God gave me that I'm going to be the next king of Israel. You're the only thing standing in the way. Yeah, he had already been anointed. And and what's, what's interesting oh. about this for me is God cares much more. God, what established David as a man after God's own heart is that David cared much more about how he was doing things and who he was becoming than he was worried about getting to where God had told him to go. Mm, that's hard for a future oriented person too. Yes. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Developing. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. What? Yeah. So, so much I, so more. Like, I mean, like, that's why, that's, that's why what I the hesitate. wilderness does. That's why him. I hesitate with, um, that's why I hesitate with like cutting people off because I don't know what God's doing with that person yet. Yeah. That's why I hesitate with labeling someone. Oh, well, this person is this because I don't know yet. Yeah. I'm still praying. I'm still waiting. I'm still listening. We just keep going back to it. But like, what about when God keeps revealing it to you over and over and over and over? And it's, it's, is it that God is revealing this is who this person is? Or, you know, like at what point are you like, Okay, this is, or do you just keep holding on? I when don't know. Da, da, I think there's a couple things. Number one, I know what Jesus when, does, would when, do. when does it hurt bad enough for you to let go? Mm. When does it hurt bad enough for you to let go? And then also, once you realize who a person is, <coughs> can you still love them even though you realize that it's maybe not somebody you can be close to because it's more about watching your own heart. Yeah. Like Proverbs says, like, yeah. guard your heart, yeah. for from it flow the springs of life. Like, my forgiveness and my love for people has very little to do with how they respond to any of it. It's about me keeping my heart in alignment with Jesus. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so like, I will sometimes let people hurt me just because I'm watching out for my own heart because rather than go, remember David, what ba- David's biggest test, the test of the anointing, which I might get to in the coming weeks on Sundays, the test of the anointing is, Will you take your authority into your own hand or will you trust God to do it? That's back to Ishmael. It goes all the way back. It goes all the way back to like the brothers in the garden too. It goes all the way back, you know, like creating your own, doing it, eating the apple. Like it goes all the way back. It's with, it's like in us to just take it into our own hands. I'm going to call this person. Uh, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go walk into that, that room. 
it's a rushedness too, isn't there? There's like this. I've got to make quickly. this right. I've got to do this. Like uh, you get this impulsive nature mm. within us that when we're provoked or when we're we feel abandoned or we feel unsafe or we feel like it's not happening or we feel like we're forgotten or we feel like we're on the outside. There's this impulse in us that wants us to go fix it. And sometimes like getting to a position can be like drug use almost. Mm. You're like I get there. It'll be better. No. You have to first deal with the discomfort of not having what you want. And when you find peace there, then God at the proper time will raise you up and exalt you to where he wants you to be. How do you stay in the beloved? How do you stay in peace? Like when all of those temptations to feel like be triggered or react or be impulsive or like for David, he stayed in the beloved. I like I feel like it's linked probably back to the wilderness and his tra- his time and the singing he had and like the connection he had with the go- <coughs> the Lord. That's so good. But like, how do you stay in the beloved? Like Graham Cook, um, a man who has like some ministry, um, but he would always like ha- talk about that, like staying in the beloved. And there's in, in the New Testament, it, all over the place is like talks about sitting in heavenly places. Like we have access to sit up higher. And that's the beauty of heaven being here now. We don't have to be victims of these circumstances. You know, how do you stay so there? Th- that's <laughs> a good question. Good, good place for us. Yeah. Be <clears throat> loved. Yeah. Means Ooh. that you're, you're loved. Like if you break that down, like beloved means that you're being loved. Hmm. And so when you really know that you're being loved by God, you can be more patient Yeah. because really his love is better than any position, title, opportunity, none of it, money, any of it. Like his love holds us together. So when you're (laughs) beloved, you're being loved by God. You, you actually can be patient. It's a fruit of the Hmm. spirit. So like when you're experiencing the fullness of God's love for you, you can chill out. (sighs) And I'm literally going through this. Currently, and so you that. can chill out. And what it does is it supernaturally shifts your priorities mm-hmm. to where what you were pursuing before. That's good. Becomes the byproduct of pursuing his love and his presence first. Mm. That happened to us yeah. as a ministry. We were going after church planting, church building. And I we had strategies. We're doing stuff. And then all of a sudden the legs were taken out from underneath us and we had an opportunity to see well trials reveal what you're really about and who you really are. Hmm. And so for us, COVID revealed who we are and what we wanted to pursue and what lines we would draw on the sand. That's good. You know, and what we, we, pers- what, what happened to us was we stripped everything back yeah. and went into right. Jesus and we did not come out. Yeah. This church is held together because we are in the beloved. It feels like the opposite of what you should or like would do, but it's exactly the right place where it used to be. What you, yeah. your nature is, let me start calling everybody. Yeah. We had many people that didn't come to church and stopped coming to church after COVID. Mm. Let me call everybody. Let me make sure I can keep them connected. Yeah. It's a striving. No. It's tiring. It's exhausting. And he's like, just sit with me. Just sit with me. Just sit with me. Come, like, don't prove anything. You don't have to prove anything. Back to, like, I'm thinking of David again. But, like, you don't have to go out and just let me fight it for you. But, and Mariah, you, I hate yeah. my job. <clears throat> but I hate my job. What do I do? Well, it depends. What's the... And I work for someone who's <laughs> toxic. Case by case. <laughs> but I'll just say, I guess, my own example. I'm, I'm in a place in my life I've I just really quick I guess I went from not knowing my voice as much not really having an opinion I know I came to you in a later season but like not knowing not caring I didn't I don't know who I am and it doesn't really matter to the Lord breaking that off and showing me my voice pretty extreme opposite and and telling me like I know I knew my value but I really knew this is what, like, let's go. I, I know what he's saying. I know who I am. I know my voice. I'm standing up to right now in this last year or two, him saying, yes, you have that, but you don't need to. Like, like the I guess the meekness of Jesus is like, he has all this power. But it's under control. But it's under control. For me, I'm not Jesus, but he's like, yes, you have a voice, but know when to use it and when not to. And you don't have to be seen. You don't have to be heard. 
you can sit back and you don't have to say tell everyone what's what to do or how to do it the, just, just uh, i can help you uh, like and he's he's like sit back and chill like listen and watch and chill out and like you don't have to even control the situation That's so good so the 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 knowing who you are in the beloved knowing your identity knowing your voice is so important and david knew who he was but he didn't need to fight when he didn't need to fight and the and the other thing is too to uh to speak into the question i asked you yeah is when you when enough's enough make a decision and trust yeah. that you're still loved by god yeah so if enough is enough and you have to leave yeah leave yeah leave there's no there's no bondage if you've been set free in christ you're free so at the moment you feel like it's too much use wisdom yes use wisdom you don't want to throw a grenade in the building as you walk out the front door <laughs> um you're probably going to need that job as a reference when's it time to leave yep one w at one point you may even run into your ex-supervisor at a restaurant yeah you may meet someone well. at your new job who mm -hmm. actually knows the people at your old workspace. Yeah. You want to leave right. And you don't want to talk bad about them as you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just make the decision and trust it. As you walk out the front doors, you <sighs> say, I love you, Jesus. And I'm here yeah. for you. It's for him, not for anyone else. 100%. That's good. Yeah. Oof. There's so much more we could go down. But but the the process of tearing away. Yeah. The process of tearing away and mm. seasons changing. Like right now, like in our ministry, I I, I need to get real comfortable with change because I hate change. Mm. I, I had so much change when I was a kid. You wouldn't like, really know that. I know, but I do. Yeah. I, I actually, um, I do not like change. Wow. I, like, I like consistency. Uh -huh. I think because when I was a kid, I th we we must have lived in like 16, 17 different apartments wow. before I was mm. like a junior in high school, wow. before my parents went to jail and I went to uh, live with my grandparents. So like in my nature, instability makes me feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. And then I got my job in full-time ministry mm -hmm. and I was like, whoa, I found my family. I'm stable. And then so rough. Then, yeah. Like 10 plus years of. <clears throat> being with the same people and developing deep connections and the whole thing. And then that moves and God moves you to another place. Yeah. And then you have Not to go through anything. The, yeah. And you're just alone and you're working through it. And now you develop this family mm. and now we're here as a ministry where I love the people that I'm surrounded by. Yeah. I really do. We're surrounded by so many great people because of that. I'm actually hesitant with change to an outside perspective. They think that we're like, moving like no. so quick yeah, but really true. what you're sensing or what you're seeing in our ministry is the movement of the spirit mm. we're very calm yeah we're not chaotic on the inside yeah. um you see buildings come you see building projects happening you see tijuana ministries birth you see adopt -a block projects go out you see all this stuff that's really a movement of the spirit. That's not me. Yeah. That's not us. I that's feel like we've been slowing down back to the slowing down thing. I feel like we've been like, maybe we used to talk about something and make it happen. <coughs> Salud. Happen very sneeze. quickly. And, but I feel like now we like talk about things a lot more. And I like that, like not waiting too long, not 20 years, but like, let's just chat about this a little bit longer. Like you often are like, mm, let's pray about it. Let's talk about it. Because in the past, it's been very quick. We've been like, now, but, we have to do it now, now, now. that's now, what now. I'm saying. I made a lot of mistakes that yeah. way. We went on a, on a relational and conversation. And we were like, how do we hold? Oh. Yeah, we went on a relational track with that, like the yeah. mistakes that I made and the yeah. pain that I've caused myself because I didn't slow down. Um, but we can go into like an organizational conversation too where like, yeah, I, I've had, it's much easier to get someone into a position than out of a position. And if I would have slowed down and just had more conversations and not moved yeah, because I felt like yeah. I had to. That's good. If I would have just slowed down just a little bit. But also you have to realize that slowing down, you will lose people. Yeah, they want to go. In the same way, but you'll also lose people by making bad decisions too quickly. So you're either you really way, gotta either, sit way with the Lord. either way is painful. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So it's, it, it's tough. So like, how do you make the decision? Like you had asked the question about like, a leader and the council around you yeah. and how you decide and make decisions. You can like just circling back there. You cannot replace a relationship with Jesus. No, you said that. That's so good. Like, because then it's like, he's the one who's guiding us 
we're listening together even we're praying together we're worshiping and listening um and it's not because this per i don't know it's hard when you when you trust people and you, they're in their advice but then he is first and you know for me like Ugh. very few people have walked in just right after i prayed most of the time trust is developed <laughs> over time mm. like with you like for example like we are very very close right now but this has been four years of trust and developing relationally mm-hmm. and just lots of deep conversation yeah. and just being in the room together yeah. and serving together. Yeah, and like, random moments and so, even. Yeah, and, and so it comes, it's not like organizationally structured, like this is the way it's going to be. It develops by the Holy Spirit over yeah. time. And you learn to trust somebody. Building. You think about Ashley who was on with you. Like, yeah. Over mm-hmm. eight or nine years, we've developed trust with her. She's developed trust with us. Um, anyone else that, that's in our ministry, we've developed trust together. Yeah. Um, I will guarantee you that if they were to go to an, you know, another place that didn't have that trust, you don't always know what you have until it's gone. Yeah, it takes time to rebuild. Yeah, it because it yeah. is difficult to rebuild yeah. the depth of the relationships that you have. So, yeah. <laughs> that's hard. There's the so tearing, much. The tearing away is so tough. And this you, conversation is. Yeah, I feel like if you want to know more, like context, also of what we're talking about, you should really go listen to Sunday's sermon from the 6th, I believe it was, or Sunday, the April, this last, this last Sunday. 7th? Yeah, 7th. But um, it was so good because it's, that, that's kind of what we're like going deeper into, I feel like. Yeah. Oh, so good, guys. Okay, I have a verse to end with. It's a psalm. Of David, I think. Actually, that's not the Psalm of David. I was going to read one of those. We're just going to, I'm just going to put it out there. He's so good. That one was a Psalm of Ascents. So let me go back to where I started. Excuse me. I'm using Pastor Parker's Bible. He has a bunch of Bibles in his room. And I definitely lost, left mine. <clears throat> where is it? 40s. Excuse me. <sighs> See, slow down. Just slow down. I'm just going to read this out. <clears throat> That's too long. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> this is the ESV. <laughs> oh, this is good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I had one this on is the a table. Very long setup. <laughs> I had one on the table, like ready, and then I flipped to Genesis. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> This is so deep. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. <laughs> there is. <laughs> this is all a mystery to me. I don't know what's about this. <laughs> this is a good close. <laughs> this is the closer. Transgression <laughs> speaks to the wicked. Hang on. What's happening right now? I have a, I have a cough, and so when I laugh, I start I start coughing really hard. So okay, this is so killing me. Laugh, just <laughs> read your verse. <laughs> Wait, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> David is so dramatic. There, there is no fear of God above all his eyes. I'm gonna skip down to it. <laughs> okay, for verse eight. No, verse six. <laughs> Oh, wait. Sorry, guys. I can't see. Do you want me to read it no. for you? No. <laughs> this is so good. If you don't know me, <laughs> this is real. Okay. This is the good. This is the meat. <clears throat> Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, <laughs> extends to the heavens. There we go. There's a really good part right before this, but it's, I know, you know, I don't want to hear that right now. Um, what verse is it? You haven't even told us what verse is. Verse 5. Oh, 36.5. Of what book? It's... It's guess. It's the Psalms. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, extends to the heavens. <laughs> your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is the like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Um, how precious is your steadfast love of God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. From um, For with you... <coughs> Excuse me. For with you is the fountain of light. For the for with you is the fountain of life. In your life we see light. Anyway, I just wanted to release that. He's so good. David's so good. He he gets there. I relate to that. But um, feast on the abundance of his house and let us drink. God, let us drink in like whatever's coming, whatever's happening, the tearing, the 
difficult relationships <laughs> let us feast on you yeah take it or leave it (laughs) psalm 36 go dive in read the uncomfortable parts this is fun (laughs) (laughs) thank you amen uh yeah that's it tune in next time yeah this is good thank you guys very much (laughs) bye (laughs) what an ending all right